thanks for dropping into the cast party. Join the cast and crew as they are poofed from their Hollywood film set into the crazy world of Fendrea. And action! Hello everyone and welcome to Cast Party. My name is Colin McManus and I will be your director for today. I am joined by my untethered cast and crew, Ryan McManus. I, Sebastian Vivaldi Greensleeves, an emo at heart musician who during the beginning stages of filming Through the Realms of Myria was hoping to get a part-time job for some extra cash. He didn't really have any friends in LA yet and nights got pretty boring, so he saw an ad for open interviews at the local guitar center. When he arrived, he found out it was for a job for their warehouse, loading and unloading trucks, which is not what he wanted, but he's used to moving heavy music equipment around during shows, so he decided to stay. When they called him into the office, he didn't even make it through the door before the managers started laughing at his scrawny frame and shooed him away. Oh. oh. RIP. Anna Brisbane. <laughs> Blueberry Sky, elephant druid actress who for two years had a life coach to help her get out of her rut that came along with her mean girl reputation. And as things started to turn around for her, she really thought he was making a difference. But eventually, she found out that he was a total scam and he was leaking details of her private life and even invasive photos of her to TMZ for money because even though he was a preposterously expensive celebrity life coach, the majority of his income actually came from being a secret paparazzi. She kicked him to the curb and figured out that everything that she did that helped turn around her career was thanks to advice from her parents, manager, and her own intuition. And that life coach's name was Omis. The oh. twist of the century. Okay. Oh shit. All right. Nigel Deacon. Who's the imposter? Zandy. Zandy. <laughs> Uh, I like it. Okay. Zandy boy. It's your boy, Zandy. Um, <laughs> that's like his beach name. Uh, yes. Xander Gucci Supreme, who, despite looking exactly like Fred Durst, almost to the point of it seeming like direct impersonation, has no idea who Fred Durst is. <laughs> this could be due to the numerous Limp Biscuit CDs that were in Omni's RV after the abduction, but it's honestly impossible to tell. <laughs> oh my god. Vince Perino. Hi, Jet the Boulder Chambers, Big Burly Heartthrob, who throughout the years he's seen a lot of reports of a lot of kids getting hurt from improper use of nail clippers. As a result, he got into researching this a little bit more. He found out that there is actually a safety on them. And he is a very large advocate of teaching people how to use the safety on nail clippers. For all of you that don't know, if you close your nail clippers just a little bit and then you slide that top part forward, it will lock it in place. You want to unlock it? Just twist it. What? So he spends at least a minute with everybody that he meets back in LA teaching them how to properly use nail clippers. For anybody listening or watching, I want you to do this. And if it blows your mind, please just tag me because I want to just be happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Jesus Christ. And we are joined once again by Omega Jones. Hey, everybody. What up? It's me, Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard, playing Elijah Lachlan, a bard sorcerer in some way, shape, or form who heard that you also wanted to be a, uh, an agent. So here's a list of clients and how much Elijah hates them. Ah! Patrick Schwarzenegger, nice kid, Nepo baby, but has somewhat earned his spot, still oozes privilege, tried to force a Terminator reboot with him, taking his father's spot. Not as cash money as you may think, seven out of 10. <laughs> Anne Hathaway, actual goddess. You didn't hear it from me, but Princess Diaries is getting a reboot and we do actually want this. <laughs> 8.5 <laughs> out of 10. Trisha Paytas took her oh. on as a pity moment and attempt to bridge content creators into the acting world. Never again. Two out of 10. Yeah. Oh. Richard <laughs> Armitage. We hooked up after an after party for the last Hobbit movie. No hey, one knows. Yo. You repeat this, you get blacklisted. Would repeat if asked. <laughs> 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> Evanescence. Yes, they were originally booked to do music for Wednesday, but that fell through horribly. We tried, but no dice. They need a kick to be relevant again. Six out of 10. So, so you're saying that Sebastian has a chance? Somewhat. Oscar Isaac. I only hate him because he left me to get another agent when he got more status in this world. Could have gotten that good Star Wars money, but 
let's say five out of ten only because he's no longer my client. <laughs> and Nick Jonas, why he wanted to be Marius in the 25th Les Mis anniversary concert, I will never know. Good acting chops isn't the worst, but isn't the best. 5.5 out of 10. So you want to take on a client? Then be inspired by these seven celebrities. The first letter in their names represents your first client. Patreon. Oh Patreon.com slash cast party. Be the best oh agent you can be and invest God. in them today. Jesus Damn. Christ. No. <laughs> Holy shit. I always catch on that something's going to turn into an ad. <laughs> I know. Wow. That's awesome. What the heck? Omega, just we have a, a tradition where we end our Patreon ads with patreon.com slash cast party bitch. I would be honored if you would provide us with one. Patreon.com slash cast party bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was a good one. And with that, let's talk about what happened last time. You all rushed to the factory on the hill where Aladon had tripped the alarm. You were able to turn on the main power by having Blueberry turn into an electric eel and spark the machine in the maintenance hatch. With the security door now raised, you entered the factory to a very noisy room where you were bombarded with an advertisement for home drones, small mechanical beings to help in everyday tasks. Xander was able to read a slogan on the wall saying, our employees know silence is key. From there, you all set out to make the room silent. Xander commanding the home drone in the small house on the table. Eli and his glitch able to use the console in front of the conveyor belt to shut it off completely. While the electric eel climbed up onto the dummy and slowly removed the metal breastplate that the full-size home drone was punching. After this brief moment of silence, the door opened to the employee area where you found Aladon stuck in a glass dome. Using Sebastian's skeleton key, Eli and his glitch opened the lock. This triggered the security protocol. Home drones began awakening from five different locations in this large factory room as Aladon rushed to shut off the security. As the battle went on, the drones swarmed around you and continued to awaken from each of the rooms, adding to this mass of machines. You split up to try and turn off the consoles controlling the electricity, some using smarts, others using force. By the time you were able to shut off all of the consoles, the home drones had been stuck in a hunger of Hadar and had been attacking each other. The factory had been shocking the different brass and iron plates on the ground, gears were shattering and spraying debris, illusory advertisements were confusing you. You were able to stop the flow of home drones and clean up the remaining enemies before Aladon was finally able to turn off the security protocol. You took a brief rest while Aladon finished his invention he had been working on. With the invention completed, he didn't feel any different, but when moving into the rift, he disappeared from Arborea. From there, Eli rushed to see Varian, while the others went to meet him at the ley line. Eli found out from Varian he had also been untethered from Arborea, finishing what he was trying to do before coming here. With that knowledge, Varian sent Eli away, saying he would take care of Arborea and the others in Irimsal. Eli rushed to the ley line, where he met up with the rest of you. Chet opened his Nokia to get you all back to Fendrea, when he saw a new voicemail. He heard his mom's voice reaching out to him, as well as someone with her. He took a moment to himself while Blueberry triangulated the position from the ley line and saw that the home button did not light up. You debated the reason for this as Varian collapsed onto the ground moving towards you. He said they have returned and were at the tree. He handed Blueberry a small bag that he told her to only open if all hope is lost. You rushed to Irimsal, laid eyes upon the tower. From inside, you heard a man yelling about reaching Omis. Now, Jet rides pebbles across the bridge towards the tower's main entrance. The rest of you in the air moving towards the tower's windows. Eli flying, Blueberry an eagle, and Sebastian and Xander atop Solus. And so the scene is set. Sebastian. Give me a wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. What yeah. the? Oh, it will. Not the disadvantage. Oh my god. Seven. Sebastian, you start to feel as you hear this man yelling from inside the tower. 
your heart just sinks. Not from the words being said, but the voice. You recognize it immediately. The Evergem. The Magistrate Barracks. Pretending to be a Magistrate Guard named Derek. Meeting Kamir. Getting ready to explore the compound. Before being escorted by a man for training. This man, who calls himself the Harbinger. No. He took you to a room, hooked you up to a harness on rails. The rest of the details are fuzzy, but you remember him asking what you are scared of. And you remember the fear you felt towards him as he let you go free. And in this moment, that fear rushes back to you. Just hearing his voice, you are frightened. You have disadvantage on attack rolls and saving throws if you can see or hear the Harbinger. Okay. Ahead of you all, this tower is easily 400 feet high, about 100 foot or so wide. There are a few large windows, ground level, and then essentially like every 100 feet or so above that. Jet, you are rushing across the bridge atop pebbles. You see ahead of you is the main entrance to the tower. No door, just a large archway. From here, even though you're some 60 feet or so away, you can see a handful of magistrate guards at the front gate, all holding short bows. I'm an eagle. My plan was Solus carry the two, and then Jet and Pebbles were coming up from the bottom. So, Sebastian can't willingly move towards the source of that voice as long as he can hear it, but the dragon can move him. I feel like I would still be going straight towards the colorful lights, me and the dragon, unless someone tells me to stop. I would be slapping Xander on his shoulder. We need to turn around immediately. Get Blueberry, get to the ground, something. We cannot go in there. Oh, uh, what do you, what? No, we. there's clearly something that we have to do in there. Blue, Blue, we need to turn around. We need to go to the ground. We need to something. Please get me away. Why, 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 why? And the Evergem, the guy who got me captive, we, he's, that's him. I know that voice. Varian's in trouble. He's fine. The tree might not be, but I cannot go in. Turn him around or I'm jumping. The tree is important itself. We have to go. I jump off. Oh, what the hell? I jump off Solus. I pull out my berry, shove it in my mouth. I am aiming for the main entrance because I feel as if I would be more safe going in with Jet. You see, you guys were a little bit ahead of Jet just because of how fast the dragons and stuff can fly. You're able to jump and trajectory yourself with this slow fall on you, with the feather fall, and get onto the bridge. I'll take that. Just for context, Eli would have just seen Sebastian suddenly start screaming bloody murder and then jump off and start floating down. Yep. Yeah. And the rest of us look equally as confused. We want to go in from the bottom then? All together? Blueberry, as you say that, as you're looking, there is on the eastern entrance, that's where you see the main entryway that Jet and Pebbles are headed towards. There is a pretty large window, easily 10 foot across on the southern side on the ground floor. I think I'd be better off from far away. Just an inkling. Okay, let's go down there. I'm gonna point at the window to Solus and to Elijah. I have another quick question. Can I ascertain that Sebastian was scared or did it look like he just gave up? Give me insight. 24. You've run with Sebastian for not very long, but you know this is pure fear. This is unlike Sebastian. This seems irregular. If I can add to that, when we were getting ready, waking up in the morning to go to the factory, Sebastian was gung-ho, and I said, I'm ready, let's do this. And Eli said, seemed very confident about that. Now he is in the face of a voice and has thrown himself from a dragon a hundred feet in the air. That context helps how Elijah felt about it. Then he would listen to Blue 
and follow them, just go straight down. He starts to go down and we kind of go towards our now intended uh, destination. Sebastian, you hear in your ear, I don't know what's going on, but get it the fuck together. Bardic inspiration. I am waiting on the bridge, collapsed over with my hands on my knees, breathing heavily after I land, just waiting for Jet to ride up. Sebastian! Sebastian, get up here! I'm, I'm running as quick as I can on pebbles towards him and just throwing my arm out to try to grab him up while we're still moving. No, I can't go in! You're coming! I don't think I can. Buddy, we gotta go now. We don't have time for this. I don't know what's wrong. I know. I don't know why you jumped I know. off. Let me explain. Evergem, the Evergem, when I left you, I was pretending to be someone, I don't Derek or whatever, from the magistrate. That guy took me. I saw him kill you. Okay? I saw him kill you. I saw him kill everyone. It might have been just a fucking image in my head to plant this fear inside of me, but it fucking worked. And I couldn't go in there, at least on a dragon. I at least had to come down here and try to keep it together and go in with you. I'm sorry, man. I, I, I mean, I'm hearing you, but we have shit that we have to do right now. So I'm going to ask you to mount, and I'm using command on Sebastian. Sebastian. You hear a yell from the tower and a burst of flame. You have disadvantage on the saving throw. As the burst hits and just rumbles the tower, it's an immediate shudder. That's a, that one right off the bat. So shaking, he forearm clasps you and tries to have you pull him up. Hold on. You're rushing up as the other three are heading towards that window. Blueberry is the first one to the window. And inside Blue, it's beautiful. For those of you who haven't seen the Haven Eye before, it is just magnificent. These dark black obsidian-like flooring with a tree growing out of it. No roots beneath its depth. This just straight trunk that goes upward before branching in all these different directions. No leaves, just this bright white bark that contrasts so heavily with the dark black floor and the gray stone walls. A gorgeous place. Generally would be seen as serene. Until you see the broken and burnt branches that had fallen off and crumbled onto the floor. A burst of heat and light comes from a group of ten mages, combining their power to blaze the trunk of the tree. Ten archers stand guard with bows drawn and quivers on their backs. All of these people are just stiff, like pawns on a chessboard, barely moving unless directed. Those directions coming from a being only one of you have really seen before, and that's actually Blueberry. This is the Harbinger, but in his other form. He doesn't look human right now. He's dressed in ragged gold clothing. His face no longer feature just a black outline. Eyes streaming a dark black fog. Above his head are these floating motes of energy, bright white. Three large tentacles come out of his back, though this time, two are dragging along the floor behind him. The third one arches over his shoulder, moving back and forth, and it too streaming fog from its eyes. But they are a bright white, matching the balls of energy hovering above the man. A face is at the edge of this tentacle, showing bright white teeth as it cackles and whispers angrily. You see, as you jump into this window, this tower is just a tower. It is one set of a cylindrical wall that goes 400 feet into the air. It looks like there used to be staircase going up and around, but all of that sense has crumbled. What do I see after I, I snag Sebastian and start heading towards the gate again, what do I see Blueberry and, and the rest of the, the crew doing? They have reached 
their window on the ground floor. As you are getting closer, there is enough notice. You are not really approaching quietly. You hear a sharp whistle. They all draw their arrows and they are preparing to shoot at you. Hearing that, I'm sprinting right towards them. Roll initiative. Uh, I have hands clenched on Jet's side with my face just full buried in his back. Dirty 20. Seven. 15. Nat 20 for 22. Not a nat 20, but 25. Uh, Cal, will, will you let me preemptively do something before initiative or no? What are you trying to do? I was going to cast a spell, like a buff. Sure. I'm going to start running faster towards them. Just tell Sebastian, hold on. Clench. You could just see the determination and his hands just clench on to Pebbles harder. The amulet that he's wearing, you can see just the branches in the tree start to radiate white and they just explode with more brightness throughout and it, it just it expands from his body. I'm casting Crusader's Mantle. Anybody within my vicinity will get an extra 1d4 of radiant damage. With that, we're starting at the top of initiative with Eli. Eli will look at everyone and say, I'll be honest, I don't know which one to start with, but this is bad across the board and I don't know that entity, but we got to handle it. I'm going to be right next to Blue. Some of that glitchiness is extremely apparent at this point, but he kind of like grabs the side of his head and almost coalesces into some kind of ball in a way. As he does, he then splits that into two and thrusts one of those things into the giant eagle and the other goes into himself as I twin cast haste. Oh! Ooh, snap. Ooh. As you get that, in your mind you hear, I don't know why he trusts you, but clearly you have the key. So let's unlock some shit. Bardic inspiration to you, Blueberry. Ah. And uh, then I'm going to fly inside. Oh, this is the worst idea. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and as I get in, I'm just, Hey, I don't have something after that. His eyes, specifically the eyes from the tentacle dart over. He's still looking at the main entrance as Jet and Sebastian are coming in. The tentacle looks at you as a legendary action at the end of your turn. You see one of those motes of energy matching the tentacle's eyes comes flying at you. 28 to hit. Sure. 17 radiant damage. Jet, you are up and Xander, you're on deck. So when I was uh, kind of getting pebbles to go faster, I was activating my boots as well. So I'm going to use my action to activate those to double my speed. Hold on, buddy. We're going. I'm going to grab his leg to keep him in place as we're going. And I'm going to cast Sanctuary on him as a bonus action. And I'm just going to run the full 60 feet forward towards the archers. The only glimmer of hope you've seen from Sebastian in the past five minutes, just that warm, radiating feeling, knowing that you're there to protect him. Aw. If you will let me, I'm just going to dash right through them, and I'd like to jump over the line of them. So you're trying to get to the other side of all of these archers? Yes. You got Sebastian on you. You're able to just jump straight over this whole group and land on the other side. You see this being in front of you, the Harbinger, staring down at you as that tentacle comes back to look. I'd like to get right next to the Harbinger. At the end of your turn, he simply says, Fire as all of the mages wind up with flame in their hands at the trunk of the Haven Eye. <laughs> Eli, you feel a tremble from your king. Xander, you're up. Blueberry on deck. Xander from the back of the dragon, which I assume is like either flying right in the window or is perched on the ledge or something, quietly to himself. If he wants to see Namora so bad, 
Let's show them. I'm going to cast Tasha's Otherworldly Guys, going with the Upper Plains look, so it looks exactly like Mora. And I'll do like a swooping like spin into the air, so I'm flying right above everything that's happening there. I'm going to keep a little bit of distance from you so that if we get targeted by one big spell, it hopefully won't hit us both. And so I'm just going like straight east. Hey, uh, I also don't have anything else after that. Firing off the six Eldritch Blasts at the mages. To make it easy, AC 14. Great. I would only fail that if I got a nat one. I did not. 65 damage. You see these different Eldritch Blasts. They start mixing with the fire in the mage's hands as they're getting ready to hit the tree again. And in some cases, instead of just hitting one, they explode in these bombs of fire and Eldritch energy. You see you're able to kill six out of the 10 mages. That's what I'm saying. Yes, stop hurting trees. I'm learning from Blueberry. Blueberry. Going to fly in. Just past Elijah, I am hasted. I'm going to turn back into a blueberry. I'm going to just swirl a hand in the air and it starts to glow kind of white, almost like those motes that Yucky Guy has, but then it just, it turns, it's clearly like ice. And then I just kind of grab it and throw it right between Harbinger and the mages. And I'm going to cast Ice Storm. Oh, okay. So deck save from them, deck save 20. The mages got a 19. He fails, but he's going to use a legendary resistance to succeed. Okay. He will take half. They will take all. 13 bludgeoning and 13 cold damage. And hailstones have turned the storm's area of effect into difficult terrain until the end of my next turn. So that is 20 foot radius cylinder centered on them. There's one mage left. Okay, so that's my action and bonus action and I have another action. There's one mage left. I can't do a spell. We will go Rhinoceros again. Normally it's a boss action, but you'll let me use an action, right? Yeah. I will jump in back into a white rhino. And I'm going to use the rest of my movement to get the other side of the tree. All right. Is that the end of your turn? It's the end of my turn, but it's not the end of my dragon's turn. Very true. Ooh, he could get to the last mage. Ooh. Hell yeah. He's going to fly up to the mage. And he's gonna give him a ha and a hi ya and a rend. Gonna rip at him with a 18 to hit. That hits. Nine HP left. 10 piercing, baby! Hell yeah, no more damage in trees. Ooh, I have a 10 foot reach with rend. He can reach Harbinger. He's going to slash at Harbinger for a 23 to hit. That hits. That is seven piercing. And he will open his mouth and boop, bright, bright, bright light, radiant breath weapon, dex saving throw. Before you do that, as you bite the harbinger, you feel that damage go through mm -hmm. as he disappears. Xander, he is right next to you in the air. That's sick. Well. That's so cool. So awesome. I'm so happy for that. If I do a 30 foot cone from where the dragon is right now, I can hit him. Will I also hit Elijah's double? The truth of the matter is, you don't know he's there. Then I would just do it, and it would not hit Xander, it'd just be on the edge to hit him. Uh, breath weapon, so deck save. Oh, I don't know if you added the extra 1d4, because he's in my range. Oh, he takes damage not even from just you. So do I need to roll another d4 for that first rend? Two. Failed, and then used the legendary resistance to pass. Great! Perfect. For a moment, you see the glitch come into existence for just a moment for you specifically to see it, and it goes back invisible. I save, and I also have evasion, so I take nothing. 
All Let's right. Let's go. Woo. Excellent. Nice. It would be five radiant, reduced to two to him for saving. I haven't even noticed that the dude's behind me yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You do, though, now, uh, as uh, he looks at you. How do you still have their power? It's just a prank. This is mine. You see, as he is floating in the air, that tentacle comes out, opens the mouth, showing those white, white teeth, and tries to bite at you, Xander. 27 to hit. Silvery barbs. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Get him. That's a 19 on the second one. That one doesn't hit. Hey. Yeah. Oh, really? Xander, get that advantage. I got uh, plus two from Tasha's. I would say, Xander, you will suddenly see, like, where their eyes are. You can see a zig zig. But it did not come from Elijah. I love that. I love that for me, for us. Xander, you saw that bite. It missed. You were able to use those wings to dodge out of the way. You're adept at dodging in this case as it pulls back. And you see, not from him, but the mouth starts whispering at you. And you hear Omis's voice. What? You can't do that. I need a wisdom saving throw from you, Xander. You have advantage. 21. You pass. Yes. And you are going to take half. Sick. Of 23 psychic damage. Sebastian, you hear the same whispering, but this time directed at you, and it is indeed the Harbinger's voice, but coming from the tentacle. I also need a wisdom saving throw. Disadvantage? Yes, yeah. You get plus three. Seven. Dude! Yeah. You're taking 20 psychic damage, and this is just reinforcing that fear. Jet, you feel full force, forehead pressed into your back, sides clenching. With a bonus action, he's going to target Elijah with another one of these motes of energy. Ooh, that's only an 18 to hit you, Elijah. Does not hit. As this energy comes at him, it's like a TV screen just like opened up and said, nope, and just completely ate it. Not the TV screen itself, but like the glitching is just, nope. So Sebastian, you are up. Oh, Sebastian, the first thing you notice as you jump over these archers atop pebbles and you turn around to look at them, Kamir is here. Who now? The dragonborn man you ate with oh. at the barracks. He is glassy eyed, stiff as bones and reacting to commands. He's in the archer group? Huh. He is part of the archers. Interesting. Trying so, so hard to regain my composure. I realized why we're here. We need to save the tree. He teleported away. A sense of release washes over Sebastian. I pull my face away from Jet's plate mail. Just put a hand on his shoulder. We need to make damn sure that this tree does not get harmed. You need to make sure he doesn't hit me, okay? It's not going anywhere. I got you. I trust you. And I'm gonna give you a bardic inspiration. You're gonna get my advanced bardic inspiration, so it's the advantage die. Okay. A click in Sebastian's head as he flips Daisy around. He turns to ride facing away from Jet so he can kind of see things just a little bit better. And he's going to start playing an acoustic rendition of Make Damn Sure by taking back Sunday as I cast six level wall of force completely surrounding the tree in a indestructible wall of force. Ooh. Ooh. Beautiful. You better. Let's go. Am I like shunted out of that? How does that? If you're in the way, I get to choose which side you go through. So I would have pushed you away from the tree. Cool. And it doesn't hurt? Does not hurt. As the acoustic rendition begins, Daisy starts to glow a little bit. A music staff protrudes from the hole in the guitar, but almost seems to fade away as it gets maybe a foot away from the guitar. And you just see it expand as it just envelops this tree, completely encircling it. At the end of your turn, it is the archer's turn. Would the archers know that wall of force is there? Because if it is invisible, which I believe it is. An invisible wall of force. They do not know the wall is there. Potentially, neither will Blueberry. I have seen you cast this once before, though. Yes, you have. You have. As a legendary action, I'm going to roll my wisdom save for Sanctuary first, because this is targeting you, Sebastian. Definitely going to pass in your mind flashes remnants the first time you met the harbinger 
this time different, as you see yourself striking down Jet in front of you, leaving him to die from the beast. You're taking 31 psychic damage. I don't get to roll or anything, goddamn. Not for you. Oh, oh that's a high concentration check. So that's, that's what, I need a 15? I hope this all didn't just go to waste. I get a plus three, Chet? Yes, yes, plus three. The lowest was an 11. I'm gonna use my Bardic and just pray. Seven, oh, 18. Oh yes! yeah. Wall of Force is still up. Thank you, Elijah. There's a flicker. You are distracted for a moment until you see Jet in front of you and his calming aura around him and you're able to hold on to that wall of force. That is the archer's turn. As you all see, each one pulls out their arrow. All 10 arrows hit the wall of force and bounce off as they were targeting the tree. Yes. That's their turn. We're back to the top with Eli. Good stuff. Right now, Harbinger is next to Xander. And it looks like the archers have people next to them. So I, he just yells up, focus on them. Make sure they don't harm the tree. He will turn towards the harbinger and he'll start to laugh. You come into my house and try to start causing chaos as if you own this place. That's a problem. Let's try it because he doesn't know. Let's do some blindness deafness on him. Let's make him blind. What kind of saving throw is that? Con save. That is going to be a fail. He doesn't trust this. He looks back at Sebastian and just kind of nods. I got your back as long as you got mine. You're going to get another bardic inspiration. And in the same vein, suddenly uh, Xander, you see behind the harbinger, a glitchy hand just wave as my buddy just knocks him in the back of the head. 24 to hit. Oh yeah. 15 points of force damage. Eli, at the end of your turn, this tentacle just locked onto you, staring, and another one of these motes of energy heads your way. That is a natural one. Didn't I just say you came into my house? Jet with Xander on deck. Scouring the field, looking for him after he just teleported away from me, I'll see him over by Xander. As I start to rear pebbles in that direction, I reach on my back and I just throw the shield up in the air and you can see it spin once and then just gain its composure and land right behind Sebastian and float right behind him. I will charge right forward towards where Xander is. They are all flying. Oh, how high are they? Within 10 feet and you are atop pebbles. Okay. As a rushing. Sebastian, you doing okay, buddy? Hanging in there. Jumps back into song. He's not going to get you, man. We do this together. As we get towards him, I'll take my longsword and slash at him mid-stride. 31 to hit. Jesus. Yeah. That'll do it. 15 plus an extra 12 uh, radiant. And uh, we'll rear back and try to slice like more towards one of the tentacles coming out of his back, actually. Dirty 20. That it's 15 plus 15 more radiant damage. At the end of your turn, you just hear him say, Moose. And again, all of the archers shoot towards the Haven Eye. And you see this time, he sees that nothing is connecting. Xander, you're up. He at least saw that the Harbinger got hit from behind. Knowing what he knows about Eli probably means that Ghost Eli is back there. I don't know how physical he is, but he at least knows to move a little bit. So Xander's going to fly right above Jet and Pebbles, still just kind of like rotating around him, whips out the arcane revolver, and it fills with the radiant look of a Nomura form. In the other hand, he just holds it out like it, he would be holding a revolver, and just a fully like radiant vision of a revolver comes out. And I'm just going to use the arcane revolver twice as like the one, two attacks but I'd be doing it with disadvantage as well because I'm so close. 23 to hit. That hits. Cool. Add a d4 to your damage. 35 and a d4 of radiant. Two, so 37. 
as you do so, he collides with the wall behind him, disappears. Mm -hmm. Cool, mm -hmm. great. And this time, he appears at the trunk of the Haven Eye. No! <laughs> oh. Inside the wall of force. You just ain't as good as me, bro. That's it. That's all it is. That's why they're still with me. I can drop it whenever I would like. It is concentration. So if I see him go in there, I would stop playing. I will drop concentration on Wall of Force. The second blast is aimed right for him. Also 23. 14 plus 15, 29 plus another D4. One radiant damage. He is struggling. Once again, I'm going to use the remainder of my movement to just get away from other people in case a big spell comes out. And that is my turn. Blueberry. Blueberry the rhino is going to back up like 40 feet, hasted, bow like a dog and wiggle her butt and charge at him <laughs> get and attempt to gore him. 27 to hit. That'll be 10 plus... One, right from my bracelet. Eleven bludgeoning damage. And because I charged, he's going to take an extra, ooh, big rolls. Fifteen bludgeoning damage from the charge and has to make a strength save of fifteen. He's gonna force himself to pass that. Oh, really? Cool. That'll be my turn, and then my dragon, who knows nothing except for to protect us, is going to fly towards the archers and tear them to bits. Dirty 20 to hit. 18 to hit. 6 piercing. And 6 piercing. 12 piercing. And breath weapon. Dexterity save. They got a 16. Nah. Failure. Seven radiant damage. You're able to take out this first archer who is a little closer than all the others. The others get their hair swept back, looking a little bit singed. Dragon's just gonna hover there in front of them, trying to block as much of the tree as possible, but probably not doing a great job. With your turn ending, Blueberry, that is his turn. The wall of force is gone. He is next to a large rhino, as well as the haven eye. Everyone else seems to be converging on him. You can see this tentacle comes around his back and gnaws at the trunk of the haven eye. No! With advantage, he does not crit, but definitely hits. That is 30 damage to the haven eye, plus... 25 more. Whoa, whoa. Damn. What? That's how much that thing can hit? Eli, you see more branches falling. Blueberry, there's some branches that fall and crack on your back, and you feel, again, that tremble. You can see the anger manifesting in Elijah as he's almost becoming unstable. Like, the glitchiness is like half of his chest just moves over and comes back. His entire head just, like, tweaks for a moment. After the bite, whispers start again. It's got to be Xander and Sebastian. Need wisdom saving throw. That was a nat 20. Come on, come on. 15. Oh, I'm going to use my bardic. Dirty 20. Passes. I got a 21, so that's good. That feels good. Do you want me to roll twice? We're in this together. Yeah. 20. So half to that would be 10 damage for each of you. 10 psychic damage. And he's going to use one of these motes of energy right at the Haven Eye. That is a crit. Damn it. Oh, excuse me. Silvery barbs. Thank you. That was a natural 19, but not a I'm crit. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. okay. It goes to Sebastian. He's noticing that there's a targeting happening. Thank you. With that being the end of his turn, Sebastian, you're up. He teleported behind the tree, and it was the same exact thing that happened last time. Sebastian needed his name so he could cast a certain spell. Thinking about the Harbinger, he is casting Ralithim's Psychic Lance as words penetrate his mind. How's it feel to lose control? That is an intelligence saving throw. 29. Oh. He's going to take half of 
19 psychic damage. Sebastian, you try this. You try to get in his mind. And he just starts fighting back with his own. Just making you feel what's happening. You you don't even get there. Okay. You know, it didn't work the first time. I didn't expect it to work this time either. Now that the wall of force is down, I'm going to slip Daisy behind my back. Flip around on Pebbles. Grab Jet by the waist. Go get him. You're the only one I trust to protect me. What's that supposed to mean? Yeah, kind of rude, bro. <laughs> kind of rude. You heard nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian, as you are trying to comfort yourself with Jet, you feel an invasion in your mind. You start to not know what you're doing. Yeah, you're holding Jet, but it doesn't feel right as you can feel that presence in your mind. I need a wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. You have advantage because of silvery barbs, which is a straight roll. Hell yeah. Three. No. This is mind control. Sebastian, I need you to use your highest spell slot to use fireball in the Haven Eye. Excuse me? Uh, no. Well, at least he's gonna get toasted too. I have burned a lot of high level spells. So luckily this is only a fourth level spell slot. Oh. Blue and Harbinger, can you do a dex save? Uh-huh. He got a 19. 16. You both fail. Jet, Sebastian just got done playing a song. He still has his dragon toothpick in his hand. His hand around his waist. He sparks it on your plate armor, and it flies right in. 33 fire damage. Sebastian, what are you doing? Blueberry takes 33. The Harbinger takes 33. The Haven Eye is vulnerable to fire damage. No! no. That is 66 damage to the Haven Eye. <sighs> Damn it, Sebastian. The tree is crumbling. You can see inside the trunk, it's been blasted and hollow. There is a light inside of it, but the trunk does not fall. But Sebastian, you did three damage over the Harbinger's HP. <gasps> oh. Oh. Stop. So Sebastian, he's yours. Gaining my composure and snapping out of it, I was focusing on the name, the Harbinger, the Harbinger, and it slowly fades from my mind as I see him fall to his knees. And the last thing he hears in his head is Sebastian, tell the beast I sent you. As you see, the archers have already knocked and we're getting ready to loose their arrows. But as he falls, they breathe, are confused. There's just this mass confusion of why they are even here. Derek? Where are we? Hi, Kamir. How are you doing? Oh. Oh. Where is this place? Can, can someone else take this one, please? Oh. I'm going to fly down to in front of the archers next to the dragon, hold my hands out to like in like a don't worry, like calm peace. Do any of you remember how you got here? Do any of you know anything? I don't. And you guys were all absolutely terrified and probably brainwashed by the harbinger, right? That's a dragon behind you. <laughs> That's fine. Don't don't look at that. Look at me. Don't look at that. Look at me. Oh, I need to roll concentration, actually. Oh, I failed. The dragon's gone. Oh, oh okay. All right. Yeah, the dragon is like, ah, filling with light, and then it poof. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, uh, I can explain everything, but we have a situation at the moment, so please just, like, lower your weapons for a second while we deal with this, and then we'll get you guys home. I have my fingers crossed behind my back because I don't know if that's true. All of them drop their weapons 
almost in awe at what they're looking at, head outside of the tower just into the courtyard, take some deep breaths. Some of them have scratches. One of the archers was killed in the scuffle. They take the body out of the tower. Immediately after getting torched, I would fall to the ground as an elf and just panic tidal wave straight up into the air to like take out any remaining fire around this tree I just panic just tidal wave from me straight into the ceiling like 30 feet I think it is it goes up and into the tower it fills this area any little embers left on the haven eye are away as the majority of this wave stops as little trickles of rain come down for a few seconds afterwards. Uh, I slap a hand onto the tree and give it a sixth level cure wounds. You don't see anything happen. What? <laughs> what? On Pebbles, I'd like to run with Sebastian right over to the base of the tree, and right when we get close to it, still moving, I'm just going to jump off and run towards the tree, put both my hands on it, and just try to see if I could feel any signs of life coming from it. Sebastian, have you ever been clotheslined before? With the amount of shows he's been to and mosh pits he's been thrown in, probably. Great, because as Pebbles begins to move, you suddenly feel a hand on your neck and I don't think you move with it. Hit the ground. Just wind knocked out of me, panting. You want to tell me why you just blew the fucking tree up? <laughs> it was him. It was him. It was him. He was in my head. I didn't want to. Sebastian, how could you do this? It wasn't me. What the fuck were you thinking? Yo, 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 yo. These guys were brainwashed. It probably happened to him too. We were at that camp. You heard him say something about the Evergem? I'd like to take a harder grasp on the tree to see if I feel anything from it. There is a presence. You can detect these things. This is celestial. It may be damaged, but it is still here. <sighs> Elijah looks at Blueberry. What did he give you? I don't know, it's a pouch of something. But but it's okay, right? It's okay. I'm just touching the tree and like desperately giving it into the first level cure wounds. Come on. You have to fix this. All of y'all. But he said he said last resort. He said if there was there was nothing. This is a fucking last resort. Your friend just blew the tree up! But it's alive! He could be dead! And I won't have that! Is all hope lost? Eli, it's okay. It's still here. It looks beaten and battered, but it's still here. Come. I motion him towards me and grab his hand and put my hand on his on the tree. Feel. Feel the essence of life. It's still there. And you know, you know I'm telling the truth. Because I can't lie. <sighs> Eli, you have your hand upon the tree. You do feel something. But I'm curious what Eli really feels. Eli is feeling anger at its rawest form. But as you peel back those layers, it's disappointment. Disappointment in himself. Because he promised something and now... He thinks that he just went back on that promise. And if he's going back on promises here, how the hell can he help Garrett? He's feeling a lot of confusion. He doesn't get how all this just happened. Almost betrayal of self, like a leader and he's failing because you can't even say Varian right now. From outside, you hear a call. Eli! Are you okay in there? He just looks at Blueberry and looks at the pouch. He doesn't know what it is, but he's hoping it's something, but it's wordless. He just looks. The presence comes off of Sebastian as he flies towards the direction of that voice just to see who it is. You see, it's a group. The people from Irimsal. You see, Sir Wilhelm is the one calling out to you. 
this little halfling. And you see the twins moving towards you. Two big fur bulks with Varian in hand. How does he look? The worst you've ever seen him. But breathing. There's going to be a moment where the facade breaks. As he sees them, it's like a channel just got flipped. Kind of wipes away any type of stray, glitchy tear that might have came down and just... <sighs> hey, just handling some business. How is he? Eli, he doesn't look so good. We saw you rush over and wanted to go get him to see if he could help, but collapsed just outside the camp. He hasn't woken up. We're going to do what we can. We don't know how it happened, but some folks got in here and started causing problems. But don't fret. Everything... Everything isn't okay. But it will be. Are they okay? Borgo nods towards the magistrate archers sitting outside. Some bad folk got in their head. They are not a problem, but they could use some hospitality. We will feed them. Would you take him? Hesitantly, he walks forward. Attempt to put one of Varian's arms around his head. You will see the other one also get lifted. I'll handle this. I'll, I'll make sure he's okay. We will wait to hear from you. And hey, listen. Once this all get handled, I think we found a way to get y'all home. Just let me handle this first. We will speak in the morning. That would be wonderful. I will tell Double D he'd want to take charge and assist any way he can. He and Glitch will start to go back inside. Bring him into the flower, actually bring him as close to the tree as possible. Maybe a physical connection could help or something. Sit Varian, leaning up against the trunk of the tree. So what do we do? We gotta do something. You said it's breathing, it's still alive. I'm choosing to believe you. But we're not leaving here until this gets fixed. I don't know. I'm sorry, I... I don't know. Varian, give us... Give us something, anything. Eli just locked with Blueberry. What did he give you? I don't know. Open. What is it? Have you looked at it? I'm afraid it'll, like, explode or do something. It's, he said only if all hope was lost. And I don't feel like the hope is lost. So what if it does something bad? Blue, now might be the time. Just peek. Blueberry, as you open the pouch, you see inside is a single spherical object. The outside of it is white, matching the bark of the Haveneye. It's a seed for a new tree. I'm going to put my um, fingers into the ground, start casting a seventh level plant growth, even though it's normally third level and normally only affects non-magical plants. But I'm going to start long casting it because long casting it for eight hours makes it do way more important stuff. Maybe it'll do something that'll help. My eyes just kind of glow uh, white green and it looks like I'm like meditating into the tree. The rest of you see Blueberry in a very meditative state, almost like how she trances at night, but this time expelling energy. And you see that there is growth, not of the Haven Eye, but of different plants around this area. Vines slowly creeping up the stones of the tower, Flowers budding just outside in the very dense and broken down Arborean earth. And from the tree itself, 
there are these vines that don't encase it, but almost look like a scaffolding to help keep the tree sturdy and in place. And the longer you watch, you see a bed of moss starts forming just underneath Varian, seating him up a bit higher. And Blueberry, you see different types of flowers and herbs start growing from this moss. And Jet, as you are standing near Varian and looking at him, you see the breathing becomes a little less erratic and more stable. Look, Eli. Look at him now. I think that in this state, I can only see plants. I can see plants, I can't see any of you, but I can hear you. Elijah will get down on a knee, try to see if he's gonna open his eyes or wake up. The first thing he would try to do, he will place a hand on Varian's chest and you'll see his hand glitch in and out for a moment, but as it does, it kind of glows. And I'm just going to attempt a first level cure wounds on Varian himself. For a moment, Eyes don't open, but you hear him. Eli, you have made yourself worthy of Arborea. As he falls back. Not to hurt him, but like, there's definitely like a slap on his face, like, nah, -uh. wake back up. No, you knew. You knew that the only way to do this was to Start over. You saved the Haven, I... I don't know if it will regrow limbs. It's not meant to... It's not meant to recover. There will be turmoil across the realms. After this, I am not sure to what extent. Rebirth doesn't have to happen here. Or now. But days are numbered. What happens to you? I go with the tree, or wherever it may go. You all feel a sense of relief, like a big weight off of Eli's shoulder for a moment. <sighs> I don't know if what she is doing will help you in the long run, but if it's better that we plant you somewhere else, will that help with this turmoil or are we just doomed? Not doomed, for she has it. It will help you get back home. I just hope she can find a reasonable place to plant it. Make sure it can be cared for. Arborea will be no more in a month's time. As she does with the plants, tell her to meditate with the seed. You all should rest. If you are going to find him, you will need all your strength. These people can wait for you to get back and help them home. Elijah, who is a wordsmith, is flabbergasted and does not know what words to say. But he'll keep holding Varian. If they rest, he's going to rest with Varian. Blueberry continues to grow plants, add color and beauty, serenity to this place. It always was, but there was this malignant nature here. It was black, white, and gray. And there was conflict and greed and desire. And now there is loss and love. The rest of you know that this is going to take some time. Burgo and Borgo, the Furbolg twins, come back over to the tower. They feed the magistrate guards, aren't quite sure what to tell them other than that they'll have a place to stay and be safe until they can get them home. I was going to go to the magistrate people. Xander doesn't know what to do in this situation. He doesn't deal with death very well. Death of people he didn't mean to kill. To kind of explain what happened, give a quick synopsis of what was happening ultimately lands on you guys are the magistrate we are the people 
Don't worry about that. If you don't know who we are, good. If you want to get back to Fendrea, we need to be on the same side for at least a little bit. Okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're not going to stay here. I mean, I don't know how Derek got here, but still. And you're saying that was all the captain? Yeah. Yeah, he, uh... He caused some some major shit in there, and by the way, that's like the tree that keeps all the realms connected. So he did some bad stuff. I'm sorry if we were a part of it. We we didn't mean to, right, guys? No, I know it's not your fault, guys. We uh we saw firsthand what he could do. So just eat up, get some rest. We'll sort it out in the morning. You hear them walk over to the barracks. As you're waiting outside, you hear, Who ripped up all the banners? Seeing everything going on with Blueberry and Eli and Varian, I'll give them their time to do their thing. As she starts to focus on the seed, I'll turn back around. Sebastian! I'll run over to him and call for my shield to come back and put my arm out and have the shield from behind him help bring him up as I grab onto him. I grab his arm and just pull him in quickly and hug him. I I don't know how to say it, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you. I just... I see the tree and it's... It just reminds me of home. It's one of the puzzle pieces. And if we don't have all pieces, how are we going to get back? I saw it burning and I snapped. Head buried in your chest with tears. I know that's why I wanted to protect it so much. I don't know if you saw it because you were fighting stuff, but while I was singing, I made a barrier around the tree. I was just trying to help. The arrows didn't get to it. I didn't let anything get to it. And then I messed up. He got in my head just like he did back at the Evergem. I didn't mean to do it. It's not your fault. It's not. I know I made it seem like it was. There's no fault on your end. Are we still going to get home? We're going to get home. I promise you all that was going to happen. You know I don't break a promise. That's why I followed you in here. That's why we're going home. After hearing Varian say that Arborea would be gone in a month, not long after that I would release the spell to just let these new plants live here for as long as they can. My eyes will go back to normal. And I'll just sit with the seed in my lap. We planting this in Fendrea? It's what he would want. Okay. Maybe we can go back to the elves. When we first got here. I'm sure they could protect another epic tree. I'll call out. If it hasn't been taken... We could plant it up in Helios, away from the plagued ground, but it's in the sky, as long as it just stops being used for production, and is more of a sanctuary. Yeah, that actually would be great if there were no people up there, and no rot, and no magistrate, and if it still exists, so I guess, I guess we'll see. A lot of ifs. Yeah. Eli Prime is focused on Varian, 100%. Sebastian is like, you feel a gaze on you. He senses it. How do we get back at this point? I know what we have to do. What? He looks back down at Varian. He shakes his head. Either I see you again as you are now or I see you when the new seed is planted 
He's going to kiss his own two fingers and then place it on top of Varian's head. He's going to take Varian and lay him on that moss that grew underneath him. Stand up. Think as hard as he can on his brother, on Vendrea, almost those, those connection points that he has now made with this four. Doesn't know if it's going to work, but he just feels like this is what he needs to do. He's going to spin his staff in his hand and strike the tree as hard as he can thinking of Fendrea trying to open a portal. He knows that connecting with the tree, harming it, forces portals to open. This is something you're unfortunately familiar with. You strike the tree just in between some of the vines. It trembles a moment, but you don't feel the tremble in your staff. And instead, you see a bit of bark fall off the tree and land on Varian, atop his forehead where you've put your fingers. And it glows. As Blueberry, you see the seed glows as well, as you feel this magical power coming from it. Seeds glowing. Blueberry. And Eli, if you'd like, I'd like you to roll Arcana. This is legit a natural 20. And that's legit a natural one. <laughs> Eli, you know what this tree does. You have spent time with it. You know that its magic is to connect two places together. And whatever just happened activated the seed. And as you go over to it, you see it glowing. This is the seed of the Haven Eye. While this is in your possession, once per day, without expending a spell slot, you can cast Plane Shift. <sighs> you son of a bitch. Okay. He looks at everyone. We can do it now. Or we can wait. Till we all recovered. We should, we should rest. Here. Sebastian, are you... better? Now that he's gone. Speaking of, I'm gonna like, nudge him with my foot and flip him over. You think he has anything on him that's not totally roasted? I don't want anything. I just want to forget him. I kind of do. Sandra will kind of meander over. He'll, he'll dig around in the pockets just to see what's up. Could I tell at all from what I saw if he seemed like me in any way? Like in terms of the my connection with Nomura and Blightmore? You heard Omis's voice come from that tentacle. And with some time, you're searching him. He has... A bracelet on each arm. A small sphere lies on each. Just a black cord with a small sphere. Orange on one, purple on the other. And around his neck, an amulet with a white sphere. I'll at least take the bracelets and the, the necklace. The bracelets, those are directly like Blightmore and Nomura related. And I mean, if it's white, it's got to be Omis, right? Xander loves to accessorize, so... It takes a while for you all to move these bodies outside, find a place for them. Some of the other magistrate archers, you see them mourning outside. And you all set up for the night. It's a bit of a long wait before it's time to really go to sleep. But Elijah, you're by Varian. Every step of the way, you see that bark landed on his forehead. You see it still hums a light glow as it's darker, as there's yawning from the others, as you see 
strands of hair on the ground behind Varian's head. As you see the last little bit of light leave the bark. And Varian stops breathing. To honor Varian's passing, we wanted to avoid a silly skit at the end of the episode. However, we would still love to thank all of our Walk of Fame patrons for supporting the show and allowing us to bring you the highest quality D&D content that we possibly can. Your support, along with the other patrons, means the absolute world to us, and we wouldn't be where we are still doing this nearly three years later if it weren't for you. We would love to thank our Walk of Famers, Bobby, Dragons, Mason, Dubword, Sainty Love, Eric Five, Jude, Faux Runner, Frankie, Heather, Isuik, Jesky Fire, Jesse, Jin, Lady Lorax, Lexi, Miharu, Minehack, Nyork, Opti, Red Mafia Panda, Bass Drop, and Ebab Flow. Thank you again from the bottom of our hearts. Now let's take a moment to honor Varian. <laughs>